of Basketball Weekly Show on the Grizzly Crew Sports Network. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I want to welcome in former Indiana Hoosier, won a 1981 national championship game where he combined with Isaiah Thomas for, what was that, 23 points, Steve? 26, 26 points. 26 points. Um, 26 points. And I know every time that I talk to Isaiah, he says we would never would have won that without Steve. You're damn right we wouldn't have. <laughs> we wouldn't have won it without Isaiah either. It's a team game, buddy. It's a team game. All right. Now, you may ask why we're doing an Indiana Basketball Weekly show in the middle of or end of May. And that's because, actually, we probably have more positive things happen for Indiana basketball in the last few weeks than we did all of last season. Um, of course, the signing of Romeo Langford about a month ago. And then yesterday, the announcement is Juwan Morgan will be returning to IU. And Steve, when you look at this roster, it's hard not to be excited about the upcoming season. I'm very excited about the season. I mean, there there is some strong talent on this basketball team now. Um, across the board, we got 18 players on the roster. Obviously, all of them are not going to dress and play. Um, so we've got some redshirt. We have talent deeper than just um, Langford and, and Devontae, or um, Langford and um, Juwan. You know, we've got we've still got Devontae. We got um, we've got uh, Zach McRoberts. We brought in the uh, the big kid um Bister coming in so we're we are strong in our first seven players but i really think this is a team of eight to nine to ten players that can play big ten basketball and i think that's really really good the, the really the good thing that i see about this roster too for the first time now there's 18 kids listed on the roster seven of them are actually from indiana which is something that i think it's near and dear to all of our hearts that we've always believed that the best IU teams are teams that are made up mostly of kids from Indiana and Illinois and Ohio, you know, what we consider our sister states right there. But we're starting to see a trend going back to that. And I'm really proud of uh, Coach for taking, up, taking us back into that and starting keeping our kids at home. Romeo, obviously, is a huge catch for us and probably will open some floodgates for a lot of other Indiana players. Come, we'll, at some point here we'll talk a little bit about the incoming class looking at they were going after for next season. A lot of those are Indiana kids as well. So it's all very positive. The downside, and I'll turn it back over to you after this, and you can address this a little bit, is we're in a sense of urgency here because really if you look at it, you know, Juwan's got one year of eligibility left. Big Roberts has one year of eligibility left. The, the Fister kid has one year of eligibility left. And really, truly, Romeo – is probably seriously a one to two year player. Now, you know, we, 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 we can't bank on that. He may stay four years. God hope he does, but I doubt that's going to happen. But so really there's a real sense of urgency in this basketball team to produce right now, immediately coming out of the gates this year. And we're also going into the first time ever a 20 game big 10 season. It's the first time ever any league has played 20 league games in the season. It's groundbreaking for Division One college basketball. So it's going to be a long and grinding Big Ten season. Um, we're going to have to get through it. We're going to have to win in order to sustain the effort we've developed now in our recruiting and building this strong franchise and returning Indiana to its relevance and glory. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think this. I think no matter how you look at this, this second year was a must-win season anyways because, let's face it, this is Indiana basketball – this is not, you know, Indiana State, <clears throat> excuse me, where you get four or five years to figure this out. I think this is something that he was going to have to be a tournament team or close to it this year anyways, because as we saw last year with the crowds, especially with the student section, missing seven or 8,000 people during the Illinois game, the last couple home games, that this is a fan base that wants to win, that expects to win. And when you look at it, you bring in guys like Romeo Langford, but to me, what's even bigger than that is if you look at what the list of the best five players in the state of Indiana were, he didn't just get Romeo. He got three guys in that top five, and how long has right. it been since that's happened? I mean, that was the thing that Bobby Knight could do in the 70s and 80s that guys like you know Mike Davis and them couldn't pull off. And the thing is, there's right. a lot of quality basketball in Indiana, and if you get the majority of the best players there, you're going to have a top 10, top 20 program every year. 
So when you right. look at Romeo Langford and think, well, maybe we lose him, maybe we do. But the thing is, if this turns into a 25-win team or a 23-win team and they advance far in the tournament, people are going to want to come here because Indiana basketball was not relative up until the last month or relevant until the last month. Now they're relevant. Agreed. You could throw 22, 23, 25 wins on there. Everybody in the state of Indiana is going to want to go there. They're not going to want to go to Purdue. They're not going to want to go to Butler. And those are good programs. But those are programs, especially Butler surpassed Indiana over the last decade. But if you've got an Indiana team that's winning at the same level as Butler, those kids are going to come to Indiana. Agreed. Agreed. And the other two players, of course, you're talking about are um, Anderson from South Bend and Tennessee from Lafayette. Um, and to steal one right under the nose of uh, Purdue is, is really a good thing for IU as well. Um, but, yeah, three strong players. And I, I think there's a nucleus there to build upon. And in relation to your your agreeing with the sense of urgency, I was hoping, without looking at the shortness of lifespan of some of these players, not thinking that into the equation, we had a couple of years. I think it was a must that we improved off of last year. Um, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't really rele- relegate it to the point where we had as a make a break season for us to continue the momentum. Um, right now, if Indiana does not make the tournament, it's, it's, it's a monumental failure for this basketball team. I believe yeah, it, it, it would be a, a monumental, monumental failure for Indiana not to play in, in the NCAA championship tournament this year. I, it would just be a failure. It, it was, there's no other way to describe it. You just got to put it out there and say, it will be a failure if this team does not play in the tournament. Yeah, and when when you look at programs similar to Indiana, I I, I would kind of put it in the same boat as Kentucky coming off of Eddie Sutton. They get Rick Pitino. They're on probation. Their first year, you know, they're a 500 team. A year or two later, they're in the Elite Eight playing Duke. And I think this, when you get a young, exciting coach, which Pitino was at the time before everybody knew he was a pervert, and when you get – a coach like Miller, who is an exciting coach, he's taken Dayton to the Elite Eight. So you got excitement from the start of the last year. Now, the thing we saw was we saw that team, I think, get significantly better towards the end of the season. Um, right. They, they weren't consistent, and they had problems. But when you look at them, the problems were a lack of shooting, which with Anderson and Langford, I think you take care of. And you also had a problem with depth up front because when Deron Davis went down, there wasn't really anybody to fill in there. And when you look right. at the starting five now, I think you're looking at Langford and Green in the backcourt, Justin Smith, Jawan Morgan, and Deron Davis in the front court. You all of a sudden have a much bigger team physically. And this was a team last year that for playing Big Ten basketball, even though they did rebound the ball well at the end of the season, they were physically outmatched, whether it was by strength or speed. I, I think now you have an athletic team with 12 or 13 guys on a roster that can play Big Ten basketball. I, I agree. I agree entirely. I, I, I think this hinges on what I think are, are, are two key elements quickly. One is the adaptability of Romeo. I mean, we know what he is mythically in terms of, you know, legend and lore already created in the world of high school basketball in Indiana, but is that going to translate immediately into the college world and and into the Big Ten, which still is one of the premier conferences and still one of the most physical conferences to play in? Um, And is that going to translate and is that that going to come into play quick enough for Indiana to benefit off of him this year? I I believe it will. I think the kid's got a great head on his shoulders, and I think he's a smart basketball player, and I think he's very adaptable. But to me, the other big key here is the improvement and the consistent development of Devontae Green. I think Green is the deal maker in this whole thing because we know what Morgan's going to give us. Morgan's steady Eddie. He's going to play. Fister looks like a big physical kid. He's got four years under his belt. He can come in and play. He's big. He's rugged. He's 6'9 or 6'10, 230. He's going to fill a gap for us inside. You know, Romeo, I, I think it's just, he's going to adapt. But to me, Devonte is is the one who can push us over the edge or keep us just short of getting to the water. Um, your thoughts? Yeah, and, and I think when you also look at it with the Anderson kid, he's one of the best three point shooters in the country. 
And right. with Langford's ability to catch and shoot the ball, create his own shot, shoot off the dribble, that helps the Hoosiers tremendously in areas they didn't have last right. year. you got Green creating the shots, but the thing is this. If Anderson can come in and shoot the ball the way he did in high school, which is a big question mark for anybody going from right. the any high freshman, school to any the Division coming one in, level, right. but if he right. can shoot the ball that well, how do you defend Indiana? Because then you have the ability to say, say you're playing a big physical team that is not real athletic. You can go three guards or if you've got, sm- yep. yeah, if you got a mm-hmm. smaller team, you can either match up with smaller guys or you can actually put big athletic guys in that they can't control. And the thing is this, I think Archie Miller is a hell of a basketball coach. And the thing I remember Agreed. most from when he was at Dayton, was the ability and the emphasis he put on his guards rebounding the basketball. And the thing is this, right. last year your guards were Newkirk and Johnson, 6'1", 6'3". Now you've got Devontae Green, you've got Romeo Langford at 6'3", and 6'5". And the one thing I've noticed from watching Langford is he hits the board hard. And if you've got a 6'5 guard in there, I think the rebounding on this team becomes even stronger because you've got the guards that can hit the boards. And like I said, Archie at Dayton, the guards rebounding the ball was a huge part of his team, and he's got that now. He's got the guys that are physically capable of doing that. Yeah, and and I think we haven't even even broached yet upon what is really the strength of of Archie Miller, and that's the fact that he's an outstanding defensive coach. And now you've got much more athleticism out there with with the height of of Green and and Romeo and Anderson coming in, and and these guys – um, have the lankiness, the speed, the arm width, to cover a lot of ground defensively. Uh, Morgan is is really good at playing down inside, and you've got a you've got a, just a beast in there now. And Fister, um, you know, six six ten, six eleven, two hundred thirty pounds. He's going to plug most any hole and going to make it tough to shoot over in the Big Ten. Yeah, and the thing um, people forget so about we didn't even talk about the real quick the, the, the ability. The, thing, for, the yeah. thing people forget about Fisner is the fact that he comes from a program that consistently wins 25 games a season. He's used to Exactly. Winning. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. So you got He's a ready to produce right now. I, to win. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's got four years under his belt. He's a winner, a proven winner. Um, I think this kid's going to be one of the biggest pleasant surprises of the season. Um, you know, I think he's – because he's a fine. He's just a fine that we got our hands on, and I think he's going to fit into our system real well. Um, he's going to take a lot of stress off of uh, Juwan and free Juwan up to be a little more flexible defensively and offensively and keep him out of foul trouble a little bit more. Not that Juwan was foul prone, but, you know, when you're in there doing it all battling all by yourself, it's going to happen. Um, you know, unless you're LeBron, then LeBron never gets a foul called on him. So that's LeBron. Um, so I, I think defensively this team becomes much stronger and – you know, we all know that still in the end, defense wins wins championships. Well, I think this. Um, you know, any great coach will tell you that. And I think Indiana is really poised to be a very tough team to play right out of the gate. They open up right out of the gates at Mar- or with Marquette and the Gavit thing, and then they can play Louisville, who is going to be hell bent to come after us because of all the snide remarks you've made about Rick Pitino. Um, yeah, but I'm me sure and they've Chris got a Mack, out their, their new coach is Chris Macko, and me and him are buddies. So uh, that's know. right, Xavier guy. That's right. So yeah, he'll they'll probably give you front row seat. Yeah, I've interviewed and him like five or six times. And, and, an me and Chris are good. And an escort to the game. <laughs> yeah, and, but you talk about defense winning championships, but I think something that's just as important to win a championship, especially in college basketball, is the point guard play. And last year, the point right. guard play was spotty at best. Right now, though, you got Devontae Green, who had a strong finish to the season, which probably puts him mm-hmm. as the starter going in. But you've also got an older Al Durham and an incoming freshman, Rob Finisi, I, I think are both very capable of being capable, capable players, of right? Yeah, and the thing is this, having those two guys forces Devontae Green to be even better because con- competition right. breeds you know, improvement. So I, I well, think- let's face it, it, it. At times last year, we, we saw Devontae Green play like the best player in the Big Ten. I mean, then we saw him play like he didn't belong in the, the Hoosier Crossroads Conference. Um, you know, the, the, the consistency level of him has got to be what he's got to come to the plate with. He's talented as all get out, but he's got to be more consistent. 
Romeo's an unknown. I mean, he's predictable, but he's unknown. You know, let's hope our predictions come out right about him early. Um, so, but then you do, you, you've got good backup there. And I, I think we're strong at guard for the first time in a long time. Indiana has really got some good depth at the guard position. Um, we can rotate these guys out. We can work them harder because we can rest them more. Um, we can let Romeo learn a little bit and we can, you know, make sure we give Delonte the opportunity to develop consistency because we've got good backup there all along the way. And, you know, we still, we have, we have McRoberts, who's just a, a role player who fills in wherever he's got to. You know, McRoberts is a guy that can come in and handle the ball up top a little bit. He can go up inside and bang. He's a defensive scrapper. I mean, this team is really all of a sudden, with the final nail in the coffin being Juwan committing to come back, just gone from hopeful to a bona fide Big Ten contender right now. I mean, this is a team that should compete for the Big Ten championship this year. Yeah. No doubt. And this you is know, a team that and, and this, we should be doing shows in March, not wondering if we're going to do an NIT preview. Exactly. And, and this is a team whose goal should be if they don't go deep into the Sweet 16, it's a disappointing season for this team, I believe. Like I said, not making the dance would be an absolute failure for this basketball program right now. And, and that's not putting too much pressure on them. That's just looking at it from the coachability that they have, the coaching staff that they have the level of talent that they have. Now, the unknown quantity is, is can can um, Archie gel them fast enough to have the immediate impact right now? Yeah, but I think there's not a lot of breathing, I, I, there's not a breathing room. Last year, we talked about that a lot during the season, how it didn't seem like they could. But the one thing that we brought up was the fact that these were not his guys that he was trying to do that with. Right. I think these are his right. guys now. His guys, right. Mm-hmm. What I'm hoping is this, what, and we talked about this all – last year, what we didn't get out of our guards last year um, was leadership, right? We, we, we lacked leadership on the court terribly. We talked about that every single game. Our guards uh, did not produce leadership, and we were having to rely on um, Morgan to provide the leadership. Your big guys really you – know, anybody can be a leader on the court, but really it's your guard play. You know, I'm, what I'm hoping most to see out of Langford quickly is that Isaiah-like leadership. You know, maybe not the Isaiah – playmaking ability brought out of the gate. Um, but leadership was something Isaiah brought to the table the first game. He first practice I ever went to with him. He was a leader on the court the very first time he stepped on the court. That was natural. Um, and I'm really hoping that that's what Langford comes to the plate with first is just the ability to gel these guys, bring them around to a common goal and to focus and, and carry out Miller's message from the bench over to the court and drill and, and run that offense and run that, that system that Archie wants run. And that, that's where he needs to step up and mature the fastest in, in my boat to be effective for this team. We've got scores. Morgan's going to give you 18 to 20 points a game. Morgan, Morgan's in competition right now for Big Ten Player of the Year. You've got to look at him as one of the leading, you know, early, early season candidates. If he stays healthy and he gets the support around him that he needs. Um, like I said, I, I think Devontae can – Devontae can easily be the second leading scorer on that basketball team right off the bat. Yeah, and, and then, I, I you know, Langford, this, Langford falls in wherever he needs to. I, I think the big wild card here, and I think you think the so too, because I think you said so earlier even as Evan Fitzner, because he's a kid yeah. Oh, yeah. last year he shot 40% from three-point range, and it was the worst year he's had so far. He shot 41.5% right. for his career, and he also he's a damn good rebounder. So this is a guy right. that will bring senior leadership that's played in the NCAA basketball tournament. And I don't think that really he gets enough attention when people talk about all the additions to the Indiana basketball team. No, I, I said he's going to be the biggest surprise. I think he's going to be people are the most pleasant. Five games into the season, people are going to go, wow, where did this kid come from? And why did we not have him earlier? I think you're going to see that. He seems like a very smart basketball player. Uh, like I said, he's well-coached. He's well-seasoned. Uh, and I think that and what he does for Indiana right now, right off the bat, is he creates a defensive problem for our opponents that Indiana hasn't had in many years. You know, we haven't had it in a long time since Zeller. Really, Zeller's the last effective big man Indiana's had. That's, what, five, six years ago, yeah. seven years ago? I don't know how long has it been since Cody's been in, gone from even. IU. Yeah, about that long, though. But that's really the last time. And now 
now you've got to really play defense in the post because I think that Fisner can score. He, he can be an offensive threat down low. He's going to put players in the foul trouble. He's going to make you guard him. And, you know, you're going to have to be smart about guarding because he can't take you outside and drain the three on you. It just creates – he creates so many options for Indiana and just takes pressure off our known stars. So I, I just am really, really, really excited. I was really happy to hear that Morgan – I think it's the right move for him. I think that, you know, his values – and everybody, every scout that's come out and, and commented on it, has said that he made the right move by coming back. Well, and the thing is, and, with a backcourt that can get him the ball now and some guys right, that can yeah. shoot the ball, it's going to open the floor up. Right. And he's going to look even better. And by the time this season's over, maybe he's a top 20 pick. Maybe higher. Uh, I think if he, lives, if he plays to his potential that he's capable of playing and, and things go good for him, as they did last year. He had a great year last year. Um, he's a lottery pick, I believe. You know, he, he, he's a lottery pick. He's going to have to work on some things to, to make the grade to the NBA. But let's don't worry about that right now. Let's get Indiana, you know, to that level of fear to play us again. I think we're going to get there. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and I, I just applaud Coach, Coach and his staff for being able to put this together the way he has done it. You know, yep. in such short turnaround time. I mean, okay. you know. And I, I'm never, I'm never going to bash Tom Crean. I'm never going to bash Tom Crean because I think Tom Crean was good for Indiana basketball. I think he he did a, he laid all the groundwork for this stuff and did a great job for us. Um, but I think he took the team as far as he could. You know, I, I just think that he took them as far as he could, and it took him nine years to do that. And here now in his second full season, I think he Archie's made Indiana a contender. And yeah. I, I think everybody look at it that way. There are questions. There are always going to be questions the first time you go out. Anytime you take something new out and run it, you're a little ginger with it. You want to, you know, you want to get in the seat. You want to feel it out. And but I, I think this this is a solid vehicle to put Indiana to that level of respectability that Indiana fans and players and faculty and staff are accustomed to. Those five banners represent up there. Um, you know, that that's where we're going, and I think we're going to get there very quickly. And I hope we do because I think we have a good class coming in. And we'll talk about the class next year coming in, some of the guys are looking at. Right now, again, a lot of Indiana kids that they're looking at that are you know, up high on their list. And um, But that's important, too, because we, we are losing some of these guys quickly and we do need to sustain this growth. And, um, you know, we've got to continue having success so these kids will want to come and be part of the Indiana experience again. All right, Steve. Um, we will be back in early October to get ready for the season. Do you want to explain to everybody what those first four or five shows in October will be leading up to the season? Well, our plan our plans are to do this. We, we hope to do a, a, just a post game wrap up after every game, and then what we're working on putting together right now is a, probably a weekly show. And what I'm going to do is call on some of my former teammates and some of the former IU players to try and, and bring a different perspective from one of the former players um, each week onto the program and to talk for five or ten minutes about their experiences, about what they're seeing, looking at things through different eyes. I think that's something that we can offer um, on, on a routine basis for everybody. So I would, I would look forward to that. I'm in the process of contacting people right now and setting up some players to come on from all different periods of time, not just necessarily the 80-81 team, my friends, um, but certainly, you know, kids from the 76 team, from the 87 team, from the 90s, um, all across the board. But try and have a different perspective and let them comment on their attitudes and their – so we're not just getting, you know, my propaganda or my feelings and thoughts and things because as much as I know about Indiana basketball, I don't know quite everything. There's a few things I'm not really quite sure of yet. One or two, maybe, but that's about it. But um, so that's our goal. Is, is starting in October, we'll have a, a post game show after each show, just for maybe 15 minutes, wrapping up the game, and then a weekly show where we will um, have a former player come on with us and um, discuss the standing of the team, the growth and development of the team, and, and what their insights and thoughts are into it too. Should make it a lot more entertaining, a lot more fun. Most of these guys are really good guys. Um, and they, they all understand the game well and understand Indiana basketball well. 
and you'll get a lot of different perspective other than just mine and Mike's. And so hopefully you'll be looking forward to that coming in October. All right. Um, you want to tell everybody where they can follow us uh, or follow the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on Twitter? Uh, they can go to s 34 or at Steve Risley, and they can go to Survive in Advance. We'll carry all the information, which is our, our sister show that we do, but we will carry all the IU stuff there. And the other place you can get us, well, it's been so long since we have used the Indiana basketball website. At Grueling Hoops, uh, isn't it? At Grueling Hoops. It's at Grueling Hoops. And we may change the name of that to at Indiana Basketball Week or something like that. We'll, we'll broadcast that out in plenty of time, though. But there will be three Twitter pages dedicated to IU basketball, as well as our website, uh, as well as you can find us in all the places you're going to announce now, um, where they can get us in our, get our podcasts or radio shows on that, too. So go ahead. And, we, and we, do, we do welcome, and we are going to set up, when we have a player on, we are going to have it set up that you can call in. And we are going to plan that on a weekly basis, at a specified time, and we will make available the ability. We'll get Mike, our master engineer, over here to figure out how to do that. We can get him to push the right button. But we will have a call-in period Who's that guy? where you There's can – another guy named Mike? Uh, that, there must be another guy named Mike. It's not the Mike I know. That's no. for sure. You hung Mike, up on me know, two seconds like into this call. No, you hung up on me because you didn't know how to work a phone because now you're in California That's right. and you've become a liberal. Yeah, I have. I have. I have. I'm all about Roseanne, so – that would be um, the opposite of a... No, I'm not. I'm not all about Roseanne. That was a joke. Another, Ambien, I'm taking Ambien. Um, I'm not taking Ambien either. Um, what the hell so, are you doing, we Steve? Will, <laughs> I'm killing time as usual. Wasting time, more likely. Yeah. But we will, we will have it set up that you will be able to call in on the nights that we have a guest in on the radio show. And you'll be able to ask uh, questions of the guest or of me or whichever you want to do. And we'll have some surprise guests. I have reached out to some people. I don't want to yell that, but I reached out. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> if that's not a hint. <laughs> All right. Um, Do I leave you speechless? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right. I accidentally hit the mute button because I get, oh, so, I get so excited there when you go. start telling everybody <laughs> what you're doing. Yeah, you're doing. and there, my friends, is my good pastor, our master engineer. We will See? have that fixed by October as well. See? And if there are any master engineers out there that want to work for the Grilling Truth, you can hit us up at Grilling Truth on Twitter or the Grilling Truth at gmail.com. <laughs> We're always looking for people that are talented because so far the only thing I found was Steve. All right, guys. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you one last thing. <laughs> the pay is outstanding. Oh yeah. The pay and the benefits are bar none. <laughs> Ever since we got Juwan Morgan, we have doubled what Steve was making last year. Uh, two times zero is still zero. <laughs> I did pass that math class at IU. You took a math class. I had to. I was from the Kelly School of Business. But when I was there, it was just the Indiana School of Business. But now it's the Kelly School of Business. What's the Kelly School oh, of whatever. Business? I just played in Assembly Hall. Now we play in the Simon Scott Assembly Hall. I never even so, knew that it was called the Simon Scott Assembly Hall until you just told me. I wish I had enough money to put my name on Maybe something. we need to get a hold of Simon Scott and see if he wants to be the Simon Scott Indiana Basketball Weekly Show. Well, you know what? I Paul Scott, I, I played golf with him quite a bit. He is a hockey player, and he is a crazy dude. And I'll bet you he could just get some of his wife's family money and sponsor our show. Well, there you go. Probably just blew it right there. The Simon Scott Indiana Basketball Weekly Show. If he wants Man, to give us I enough money, it'll be on the Simon Scott Network. <laughs> there you go. We, uh, we we put the final nail in the coffin yesterday um, when, when Juwan decided to stay. I think we were all afraid and open for that. It's a highlight day for Indiana basketball to start. I know these kids are working their butts off right now to fulfill their promise. Um, we've got good kids coming in. We've got good kids already on the team. We've got the best coaching staff assembled since probably the mid-'80s, um, maybe early-'90s around that time period. 
Uh, there's a lot to be happy for for this program, a lot to look forward to, a lot to be expecting, and I'm sure they're going to deliver on 99.9% of it. So let's get ready to have a good, fun ride this year, and we will have fun with our show as well. Look forward to you guys come on and listen to us. All right, guys. I want to remind you, you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the grueling truth. So until October... What what are we doing in October? You, you never told anybody what we were doing before the season started. You just said what we were doing once the season started. Well, we'll start shows the 1st of October. We'll have guests on starting the first week of October. I know. I'm just, giving basketball you time. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. Because well, I figured I'm what happened attention. there was when it sounded like the show was over, you immediately went to the Desperate Housewives of Los Angeles or something. Beverly Hills Housewives. Beverly Hills Housewives. All right, guys. Uh, so for Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.